Biden and Dems for DNC controlled DC to become state. This is a topic report and uh, could put titled as Dems push D- for DC statehood amidst constitutional challenges. Biden administration, and uh, let's see, our, our topic here I'm covering is Biden DNC support DC statehood. And the first link that I've chosen is Biden administration backs DC statehood urges swift action as House to vote on bill from CNBC. The Biden administration on Tuesday formally threw its support behind a long shot bid from Democrats to make Washington, D.C. the 51st state. Congress should, quote, provide for a swift and orderly transition to statehood, unquote, for more than 700,000 Washington residents who do not have full voting representation in the House and Senate. And uh, if you want to preserve any semblance of a republic, nor should they ever. If you have this landmass centered around this capital, that landmass is going to have an inordinate uh, influence on national politics, and it will will get it will get favors from the, it, it, it's it's a bad thing. It's a really bad bad thing. But if you're a Democrat, you're for it, and the only reason you're for it is because you don't care about the republic. You just care about your personal factional power, and the factional power will be greatly increased in in D.C. where. Well, let's look at the headlines here. White House formally declares its support for D.C. statehood from PoliticsUSA.com. Oh, here you're going to have a nice, uh, just a nice normal title because, you know, you want to, in this sense, you want to make this, this uh, Politics USA, one of the worst of the worst sites out there, uh, left or right. Uh, so you want to normalize this thing. So you want to use uh, civil language for this type of headline. Why the GOP is so adamantly against D.C. statehood from MSNBC.com. A new push from House Democrats, which President Joe Biden endorsed Tuesday, has rekindled the debate over whether to admit the District of Columbia to the Union as the fifth first state. Not surprisingly, given the potential for two new Senate seats at play, feelings about D.C. statehood have divided near, neatly along partisan lines. Right. And it just shows nobody really cares about anything other than their, their partisan hackeries. It's all... It's all reality of power here, folks. There, as I keep saying, there's no ethics, there's no morality at play. It's just simply reality of power. I am almost sure, although not quite as sure as I am with the Dems, but I'm almost sure that if D.C. was heavily Republican, the Republicans would be favoring this, and the Democrats would be adamantly opposed to it. For the, and they would use the exact logic that each one is using uh, to combat the other. Grassroots organizations throw support behind statehood for Washington, D.C. WSLITV.com. That's that's grassroots organizations. It's an implement uh, grassroots organization. So there's the impl- the impl- implication. If you say grassroots, the implication is this is this is from the people. So therefore, it's legitimized. And if you question it, then you're questioning the people. And that's it's undemocratic. Uh, Republicans bash Washington, D.C. statehood because they can't compete there. Well, of course, this is from Esquire.com in, in the duh article of the report. Of course they do, and they can't compete there. And the reason that why the Republicans can't compete there is because they're bootstrappers. That's all they do is bootstrappers. And by bootstrappers, I mean when they look at the poor, as they say, bootstrap. Pull them up by their bootstraps. Listen, we just give them a, a, hand, a hand up, not a hand out. And they don't understand that their little hand up things are pitiful and they're not going to actually fundamentally change anything. So these people are going to constantly need uh, people in all poor communities will constantly need the hand ups, but they don't really want to give them the hand ups even and their handouts are insufficient. So even if uh, people in these uh, in these uh, poor, especially urban communities, whether they're black or white, uh, they have no alternative well, I mean, they do have an alternative. It's the not vote for either one, but that's another. Within their parameters, as they understand the world, there's only two powers. There's the Democrats and the Republicans. They have no reason to vote for the Republicans. The reason Republicans aren't competitive in these districts is because Republicans have never cared about these districts other than a few people. Jack Kemp cared, 1996 uh, presidential candidate. He was basically for aggressively working to give the, the actual hand up the amount of millions and billions and whatever of dollars that you actually have to invest in these communities to actually empower them to build communities on their terms and in their way. Uh, other than that, that's that's uh, far and in between uh, in the Republican Party. President Joe Biden's budget office gives formal support for Washington, D.C. statehood from UPI. 
And there you go with that. And D.C. Attorney General, D.C. Attorney General, talk statehood ahead of this week's House vote from WAMU 88.5. And then finally, we have this headline. GOP Rep. Nancy Mace offers faulty reasoning to deny D.C. statehood left. And that basically on which one of the left are you? Uh, your talking points memo. So faulty, faulty, as in we don't agree with it. And uh yeah, it's unconstitutional. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I think it's. I think it. I think if it's not, I mean, I think it is probably unconstitutional. I have to look into it uh, a lot more detail to give you my final opinion on that. But on the surface, I'm pretty sure it is. But I'm open to to being proven wrong there. But whether it's not or it isn't, it's a horrible idea to have this district become a state. It will be. Uh, I don't know. A lot of Republican states are going to look at this. Just all the more reason not to really have faith in the federal government in the first place. You're going to have uh, sanctuary sanctuary states, and the sanctuary states are going to be sanctuarying their citizens from any federal rule whatsoever. I mean, we're heading in that direction, folks. I mean, I, I, I don't know whether we'll get there or not. I'm not saying it's inevitable that we will, but we're, we're heading in that direction. 